Good afternoon to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is Friday, November 8th, 2019. Let's take a look at what's happening out there. All of the activity right now in the Western Hemisphere, and even that being said, nothing too severe at the moment. Uh, a tropical storm out here in the West Pac, it won't bother anyone. We do have a typhoon over here between the Philippines and Vietnam that will impact that region. We'll take a look at that real quick. Just in case you're wondering, I mean, it is hurricane season or tropical cyclone season somewhere at any hour of the day, whether it's northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. And as you can see, this moves on into southeast Asia over the next several days. More of a flood threat than anything else. But as we talk about in the impacts that we look at for the Atlantic Basin, yes, flooding rain, even in southeast Asia, can be a problem. So something to keep an eye on. If you have any interest in that region, and then we have this other cyclone. And remember, hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, those are all the exact same weather phenomenon. The general scientific term for a tropical cyclone, they just have different names for them depending on which basin they happen to develop in. And in this case, uh, this cyclone heading into the area of, of near Bangladesh and vicinity which is very storm surge prone uh, because of the shape of the bay here. And we'll see. I mean, not the most fierce of storms that we have seen in that area, but this area is very storm surge prone. And historically, we have had tremendous loss of life due to cyclones making landfall there in the past. Hopefully this will not be a repeat making landfall as a Saffir Simpson scale equivalent category one this forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, for those of you wondering where these forecasts come from, again, just keeping up with what's happening globally since the Western Hemisphere, Atlantic Basin, East Pac here, for all intents and purposes, the hurricane season is over. Even though on the calendar it ends November 30th for the Atlantic Basin, um, it's, you know, you never know, right? I mean, heck, you could get a hurricane any month of the year, but it's extremely rare and it's normally June through November. So checking out the future out here in the West Pack, I want to show you this. It's not often that I show a forecast out here. Where, what are we looking at? Well, uh, here's Japan nestled in here. Um, Philippines over here, for example. China right there, Southeast Asia from there. Uh, hopefully you got your bearings, right? So this is the Western Pacific and vicinity of the Philippine Sea. GFS model over the next few days at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, or what we call the 850 millibar level, showing, look at that large area right down here, this big cyclonic gyre. You think we only get those in the Western Hemisphere? Well, nope, sometimes they happen elsewhere. And that takes its sweet time approaching the Philippines uh, by about day five, and then it develops and then bounces back east a little bit, it's kind of weird. Look at that. It comes in. You know, we go back in time. There it is. It's like, okay, there's a wall there. Some kind of atmospheric wall finally breaks through and maybe goes across. Bottom line, going to be a fairly active pattern across the West Pack there with several areas of vorticity, as you can see. We'll just stop right here at 48 hours. There's a piece of energy here, the large cyclonic gyre here, the typhoon headed into Southeast Asia and even that cyclone that you see up here um, making landfall near Bangladesh and vicinity. So busy out there where upward motion is favorable, uh, water temperatures warm, etc. not so much in the Western Hemisphere. So a few things to keep an eye on, but nothing particularly off the charts, dangerous, uh, or out of the ordinary, put it that way. But we'll keep an eye on things because... The cyclone season, tropical cyclone season out this way uh, still has plenty of time left on the clock. All right, in the Atlantic Basin, everything generally ruled by high, uh, high level, high velocity, upper level winds, very strong upper level winds. That being said, we do have a tropical wave coming into the islands here. It's being sheared, so not much chance at all for any organization, but it will bring a little bit of energy into the region, some showers, a few thunderstorms, maybe some fresh water. You always need that. If we look at it on the vorticity signature, there it is right there, just a little bit of an impulse. 
very light green, meaning a very low amount of vorticity or spin or energy, whatever you, whatever way you want to look at it. It's not bundling, uh, you know, but it is bringing some sensible weather, weather that you can feel. And for our followers down in the windwards and parts of the leewards there, yep, you might get a few rain showers from it as it passes through. Elsewhere, though, Puerto Rico, nice and dry, same for the Dominican Republic. Now, on this scale, you don't see the little tiny pop-up showers that can form what we call those air mass thunderstorms. And there's a few of them down there, but no widespread organized areas for most of the Caribbean islands going forward. In the lower 48, cold air draining out of Canada, uh, the jet stream buckling, so we have troughiness over here in the east, the big ridge of high pressure in the west, the frontal boundary in between, Cold air coming into the United States now, coming out of the plains of Canada. Not really polar Arctic air just yet. We call that cross-polar flow. It's a little too early for that. It's usually several weeks you know, down the road into mainly January, once you've really got the darkness over the northern latitudes, creating these giant pools of cold air. And remember, cold air is also thick, kind of like molasses. That's an extreme you know, analogy, but you take, you know, warm water, for example, and you spill it, and it spreads out very rapidly, whereas thick molasses or honey or something like that, something like a goo, you know, you put a glob of that, and it spreads out very slowly because it's thicker. The, the viscosity of it is different, and the same holds true for cold air. It's more dense, and it spreads out, and it's interesting because the Rocky Mountains actually act as a barrier and it's not just the trough configuration. Um, a lot of times the Rockies do keep that cold air east of the Rockies. Sometimes, though, the trough will dip out west right over that area, and the cold air drains right over the top, and you get amazing snow and whatever, and you get a big ski season out there. So interesting pattern changes coming up, nothing to worry about in the tropics. We already looked at the vorticity map for the tropics down here, but again, just to reiterate, a lack of energy overall in the deep tropics, more energy now in the higher latitudes as we head closer and closer to the winter season. All right, looking at the lower 48, an interesting pattern setting up. This is the GFS uh, for today, going out the next several days. Strong high pressure uh, dominating. Here's the next Arctic, or not quite Arctic, but blast of cold air coming down into the lower 48 at about 72 hours' time. So you think the first shot coming in now is chilly, and it is. This next one, and that is a 1045 millibar high. That means business, and that's coming right down out of Canada, down into the lower 48. And with it, this is where the chance of some storminess comes in. And as we move out in time, this is about 96 hours out. Uh, pretty good lake effect snow machine probably setting up for the lake effect snow areas. Surprise, surprise. And then down all the way into the Rio Grande Valley and vicinity, uh, northern Mexico, south Texas, rain, cold rain at that in some places, very chilly. And, yeah, you're reading that right. That's a high-pressure area, surface high in the 1030 millibars over Oklahoma. So we're going to see some low-temperature readings, probably in the low 20s and upper teens in some places, east of the Rockies here, maybe snow up the spine of the Appalachians, rain farther south, as you would imagine. And eventually here, the prospects for maybe low pressure developing after about day five in the western Gulf, non-tropical. This is triggered from energy in the atmosphere over the warm Gulf, so not your classic warm core bundling of low-level tropical energy, but more the temperature differences in the atmosphere, what we call baroclinic forcing and other meteorological processes develops that low, you see it there, it lifts up out of the Gulf, presumably, if this all holds, this is six days out, so maybe a heavy rain event, maybe some severe weather, this is something to watch now, the very cold high pressure though, this is interesting, moving on out, so probably going to be too warm to be looking for this to track up the coast as a major snowstorm, but... I do see the potential that this could become perhaps a nor'easter. I mean, it's moving from the southwest to north, northeast, so I guess technically it is.
but how strong it is, how deep it becomes, the intensity of the low, et cetera, the track, we're talking a week out, plus, yeah, something to watch. But the cold air does kind of retreat, and it's really not going to be a factor, it looks like. But we'll see. You never know. It could be enough shallow cold air to give you an ice event in some of this area. I got my eye on it. We'll watch and see what happens. I think there's a better chance of a heavy rain event for the Gulf Coast, uh, maybe some wind, some coastal flooding, and then perhaps some heavy rain here for the coastal areas of the Carolinas and Georgia, uh, maybe even parts of northern Florida, all within the next week or so. Uh, zooming in on it, I want to show you this perspective. First front comes through, out it goes. Nice weather as we head into uh, and through Veterans Day. But then here comes the next push of cold air draining into the lower 48 like I showed you. This is just the southeast now, just to reiterate what happens here at about day five and six. And there it is, a possibility. Pretty good rains there for the northern, north central Gulf Coast. Uh, maybe New Orleans points east. We shall see as this progresses. Look at that. Very heavy rain, that pink you see there, maybe some frozen. That's just something to watch, okay? This is the, your sort of, like when we look at the tropics and you say, oh, the models are starting to pick up on something developing. Well, that's what we're looking at here since we're talking about uh, at least a week out. And then it evolves and does what it does. So that'll give us something to keep an eye on for sure over the next few days. All right, mentioned this yesterday. wanted to promote it again today and for the next 27 days or so. Um, a T-shirt, a one-of-a-kind, we call it the Hurricane Highway official T-shirt. Uh, half a million miles or more you know, in my career that I've driven and... Folks have been asking for a T-shirt for some time. And I, you know, I've got this one. I wear this one often. It's got our logo on the front. But this one's special. On the back, it's like one of those band, not band. Band's like high school band. It's like a rock, well, they, they rock band, whatever. It's showing my age here. Like a tour, right? A comedian goes on tour. A, um, a band goes on tour. Whatever. And, you know, now they have music festivals. But the same thing. You get... You know, your East Coast or Florida, whatever. It's the same, same kind of deal. It's the Hurricane Highway U.S. Tour. I wanted to kind of go down that road, haha, pun intended, uh, of the Hurricane Highway. And think about all the miles I've traveled, all the people I've interacted with. And then these are all of the storms and hurricanes from the weakest 40 mile an hour tropical storm that I hit the road for all the way up to your Cat 5, like, and I've only been in one, and that was Michael. Uh, or at least our equipment was pretty close to a five in Panama City between you, me, and the lamppost. But I digress. They're all there. And so just like a, a band, you know, you saw the movie, The Bohemian Rhapsody, and you get the start of uh, Freddie Mercury and Queen uh, in the those dives and pubs, right, all the way to the big uh, amphitheaters and concert arenas and football stadiums and everything in between. Hey, you know, not as popular as Queen, but here we are. I've done a lot of traveling, and we call it the Hurricane Highway. So from the smallest of the name storms to the biggest, a truly neat collector's item. I will put the link in the description of today's video. Uh, they're only 32 bucks plus a few dollars for them to ship it to you. Custom Inc. does our shirts, and they do a fantastic job. And seriously, they do not, they're not a sponsor. Uh, they help with this fundraising, but you know, I owe them nothing when I tell you this. Last night, I got on their chat and, you know, customer service is a big deal. And I only had white selected and somebody asked me, can I get gray? And I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I got on their chat and I'm telling you what, within three minutes, uh, the woman that helped me out, we were able to add sports gray. And ice gray, in no time flat, she redid the page for me. I didn't have to do squat except, hey, Mark, what do you need? I told her what I needed. There it is. I love good customer service and custom ink. Two thumbs up from me. The shirts are great as well. Uh, I've got about 20 T-shirts from these guys. Uh, they all pretty much look like this one or the gray version. And um, I do. I wear these when I'm out in the field or just around town. They're very comfortable. And I think you'll like yours as well. So good job, Custom Inc. Thanks for helping me. 
And the funding, you know what? I'm going to hopefully sell all 100 of them. That's my goal. And that will help cover our helium cost in the off season. It's about $70, $72 a month for us to keep our helium tanks for our weather balloon project. Um, And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out ways to fund stuff, you know, like we all do, and give you something in return. So if you're interested, these make for a good gift either to yourself or a friend, colleague, or loved one. And again, I'll put the link in today's description and get yours. You can have it well in time for the holidays. Before Turkey Day even, probably, if you hurry. All right, that is it from me. I appreciate you tuning in as always. I will not be here over the weekend. Going to be going and doing some family stuff. So I'll be back Monday, so take a couple of days off and, uh, you know, away from Mark for a little bit. <laughs> And go back through the channel, check out what you've been missing, especially if you're new. You can go review all the stuff we've got on the Hurricane Track channel on YouTube. But I'll be back Monday, and we'll take a look at what's going on uh, in the tropics. Um, and lower 48 weather, I will be focusing on more winter weather and other things related to that, you know, high-impact weather events, not just hurricanes. And a lot of that is because I can, and that's my interest, but also because of our patronage, our patrons that support what we do, you guys right here, you're allowing us to do more than ever before. So we will pick up on all of that on Monday. Have a great rest of, well, the weekend starts now, right? Clock out of work, go home, your weekend begins now. Mark told you so. Have a good weekend. Stay safe out there if you're traveling. I always want you back for more. I am Mark Sutherth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again on Monday.